but clearly the animal settled to the bottom of the pond uh, and uh, no other animals nibbled on him. Obviously nobody was chewing on him at all. Um, How straight those spines are? Is yeah, really and the flesh and the muscle just deteriorated and really rotted away at such a slow pace that the bones could uh, start to mineralize as the you know body is decaying. Uh, so really the conditions were just right that things were not moving around, getting grinded by little pebbles. So what we're looking at is the Mary skeleton, which is a Dimetrodon species. Uh, and right now we don't know what species it, it is, and it's very exciting. Where we are stratigraphically or, or layer-wise, we are in an area that is right below uh, what some of the old, old paleontologists believe was a extinction event where Dimetrodons disappeared. And so we're seeing a skeleton of an animal that is transitioning from one species of Dimetrodon to the next. Um, so this skeleton is going to tell us a lot about what was going on with the Metrodon families, uh, why they went extinct in certain areas, and why some of them survived and turned into some of the species that we're familiar with. So I am slowly working on the maxilla, which is right, the uh, the left out. cheekbone, and the left cheekbone houses the maxillary fang. This is the big killing fang, and uh, all the small teeth that follow are the post canines. And right now I'm slowly picking away the clay in between the teeth. I'm using using a toothpick on him and uh, exposing those teeth and putting glue in the cracks so that we don't lose those crowns. Pick it real good. Hey, Chris. I don't want to stick a bone. Oh on. my god! What? Jeez! Is that the Zagapopsis? That's Zagapopsis? huge! Isn't it though? What? Hold on, I want to see two. Hold on, I want to see channel. two. That's the middle spine that's connected to Oh wow, look how pretty that look looks. Look how squat that is! Yeah. Look how short Wait, it is! Wait, I thought the other ones were long. This is Jeez. a new one, isn't look, it? Look, I'm just dying to find something enough with your dance. Look I just... how short! <laughs> It's oh. not. It's so. It's, it's usually stocky. if I find it. <laughs> no, look, that's amazing. I mean, it's stocky. It's short. Uh, Aren't it's the neck ones? Short? But he's got a long neck. Okay, he's so that got, doesn't that's make amazing. Sense. So that's no, not makes, neck. Well, we're right. I mean, he's got a long neck, but he's got a short, stocky body. Yeah. That's what they said. Was he taking steroids? They, maybe. <laughs> In the field, the first thing we do when we want to take bones out of the ground is we make a plaster cast. And so what I'm holding is an example of a plaster cast. And the first thing we do is we layer the bones with foil so that we can protect them and it also helps the bones from drying out. And then we put layers of plaster and burlap on it uh, in order to take out the block of dirt with the bones. And that way we can take it to the lab and do the fine detailed work. And so once we actually get to the bones to the lab, we have all our bones cleaned with small small tools with brushes and even dental picks and uh, then we start to put the bones together and we get a really good idea of, of what the animal looked like in life, what he might have uh, eaten, who might have eaten him. Uh, so we'll have a lot of different uh, stories that we can get out of these bones.